Well, howdy, 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 nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys and girls, and welcome to this, another brand new day. It is 7, 11 a.m. on Sunday, the 1st of April, my least favorite day of the year. I hate April Fool's Day, just to make sure I'm centered. <laughs> With a passion, I loathe and despise April Fool's Day. I don't like practical jokes. I don't like fooling people. I don't like hurting people. And fooling somebody hurts them when they realize they've been made to look foolish. So I tend not to do that. I don't like to be made to look foolish. I don't want to make others feel the same way. So I don't like to do that sort of thing. I've never liked practical jokes. I don't like jokes that make somebody else the butt of the humor. So April Fool's Day is just, I don't like it. I mean. There's been some stuff that was semi-funny. Back in the 90s when I was a nurse's aide, Burger King took out like full page advertisements advertising how they'd come up with a left-handed burger so that left-handed people could eat their burgers properly without having to worry about eating a right-handed burger. That sort of thing, but so it's my least favorite day because I like learning things and finding things out. I like just mindless trivia. And on especially a day like today, you can't trust any trivia. I mean, under normal circumstances, you got to check out anything anyway. I mean, especially on the internet, people share anything that catches their fancy, whether or not it's true or completely false. So you got to be careful in the first place. But now, especially April 1st, yay. So it's I'm not going to be thrilled about the day until the day is over. Excuse me. I washed down my methadone with a glass full of carbonated beverage and my tummy is kind of upset. Thumbs up. I cannot remember if I showed off Bat Ears McGee yesterday. Yesterday was such a very bad day. So I'm going to dig out Bat Ears McGee because I cannot remember. Hi, little bat ears. Don't be scared. He's recoiling in terror as the big hand comes in and digs him out of his nest. But once he realizes the smell and all that, he, while recoiling in terror, he's also just going, well, well, you know, because he knows it's just me. He knows my smell. And he's a good little guy. You know, he's still alive, though he's going to die. And little nine toes is going to die soon and they all die so quickly nine toes is going to die so much faster because he's so old he's very thin very bony but he's just middle-aged here little bad ears he's not really really old he's you know he's like a year and some coming up on two years maybe so he's he's coming up on the end of his life but right now he's still in the the prime of his life, so he's a good little guy. I'm gonna put him back in his nest though. He's looking for his bed, he's confused and all. I don't blame him, I'd be confused too. So come on little guy, into your bed. Thank you very, very much for allowing me to show you off. Now I'm plopping a handful of bedding infested? Infested is the wrong word. Bedding covered and filled because he chewed up a whole bunch of tissue. And so the tissue was in kind of a loose wad and it's got bedding wood chips all lost inside of it. So it's nice and fluffy and it holds heat because it's insulating. So he's got a nice warm little nest and I popped his, his tissues up on top of him and now he's happy. He doesn't mind. Charvy gets irritated and moves from nest to nest. If I dig him out of this one nest and then put him back, he'll go and relocate to another part of his cage and, and nest there instead. But somebody like bat ears and all that, they just go, oh, okay, and then nestle back down into their, their nest and, and they go from there. So it's a good thing. I still like hamsters. They still bring me pleasure. And that's a good thing. I am, of course, going to recover from what's been going on. It's just taking a time. It's 
not even so much that it's my mother that passed on. I mean, that's a huge part of it. But it was just the unexpectedness of it and the family aspect of it. And it's just everything right now. So uh, not having recovered from the death of my wife to have this piled on top of it. I mean, everybody in the world goes through the death of their parents. And in some cases, I would, I, I mean, bad as my situation has been, my life has not been good, but as bad as my life has been, I have not had to deal with, like so many others have had to deal with, the death of a child. I don't think I could survive the death of one of my kids right now, so. I mean, that's, it's bad to lose somebody who's at the end of their life. It's bad to lose someone who, like my wife, was only 40 when she died. She was robbed of life. But there's no one to complain to. So she was robbed and, oh well, not much you can do. But for those people who lose a child or lose someone of uh, that particular age, it'd be horrific. I mean, and as much as it hurts me to have lost my wife and then four years later to lose my mother, I'm not having to live in one of these communities where the places are torn apart by senseless murder and death. I cannot imagine being in the family of that poor guy who was shot in the back by the cops in, in the U.S. just a few days back. I mean, literally, the guy was in his backyard after, after dark with his cell phone. For him, what happened was he was in his yard. He heard bright lights. He didn't hear bright lights, but he saw bright lights. He heard yelling, and less than a half a second later, he was shot in the back and killed. He didn't have a chance to do anything. There was this bright lights, confusion, pain, death. I at least don't have to try and deal with that in my community. I don't have to try and deal with the senseless murder of a child as an adult. I don't have to deal with any of that. So as bad, bad, bad as what I'm going through is, and it's not good, I at least don't have to deal with the added pressure of having a child or just someone in my community ruthlessly ruthlessly shot down by the people that are supposed to protect you. So thumbs up. So I'm I'm recovering. It's going to be slow, but I'm going to get there. And again, I I stress I'm not doing reaction videos yet. You have to be in a certain frame of mind to be able to do them. And right now, my world is colored in dark grays and blacks, very little light and very little pleasure. And there's not a whole lot that I'm going to be able to find fun or exciting or pleasurable in, in much of anything. I'm able to make the reaction videos because, not reaction, game videos because that allows me to just forget. Forget what I'm going through and that's good. Problem solving. Human beings are excellent, excellent problem solvers. And when provided with a problem to solve in the form of a video game, I can fixate on that and push all the horrible negative stuff out of my head and that's a good thing. Even for a short while, it works. For the 10 years that my wife spent dying in front of me during my marriage, she knew what I was doing because I was glued to my computer or my consoles during the entire time of our marriage. And I explained to her that, you know, it's my interest in electronics is only going to grow as I get older, but I never came out and said, but I'm running from reality to this stuff to try and forget. But she knew. She explained it to me. She knew toward the end. She knew why I was doing that. It was a distraction. It was a way to deal with the pain. And it, it of course, hurt. But she understood that it was a 
survival mechanism. That's the word. My sincere apologies. My memory is not good in the first place because of my fibromyalgia, my depression, the brain damage from my alcoholism and adding the extra depression and all that of what's going on. It's really hard to remember words and I'm very, very sorry. So thumbs up on that. But it's, I'm, I'm getting through life and that's a good thing. I mean, I'm surviving. I took a shower this morning and even though I was crying in the shower, it was life. I mean, I've, I'm trapped here in Shelton. I'm 200 miles away from where my parents lived and my father lives. I'm 200 miles away. My vehicle barely runs enough to make it through town. So I can't drive 200 miles away to make it there. I doubt it would make it there. I mean, the belts need to be replaced and there's the lights are burnt out. They only have high beams on it. And there's just so much stuff that is going wrong with my van. I don't have any brakes. I don't want to take the risk of being trapped between here and Bellingham with no cell phone. So I'm trapped down here. My sister, I have a sister, she is helping up there along with my stepfather's actual daughters, my stepsister. So he's not alone. My not being there is not hurting things. And in fact, considering how much I would just be a wreck while I'm there, it's actually kind of a good thing that I'm not just in the way because I would be in the way. But both my father and my sister have been going through stuff. They've donated a busload of stuff that my mother had for sewing and such. And both she and he have been just constantly crying. So, I'm still unsure of what's going to happen with him. I'm gonna to talk to my sister about life and such. So, because if I can't afford to continue living in here in Shelton now, I might have to, I don't know. I mean, I wanted to move to get into a place where I have more money, and now I may well just have to move like it or not. Thing is, I don't know of any place to move to, and I don't want to be homeless because I need my my sleep apnea sleep mask with my VPAP machine when I sleep. Because if I'm homeless and I have to sleep without that thing, I'm eventually going to have a heart attack and die before I turn well, I'm 55, probably before I turn 56 or 57. So, not good. I don't want to just die. So life is life. I mean, it's exciting. It's fun. And it is. I mean, right now for me, life is dark and really gray and awful. But I understand why it's also just temporary. I mean, alongside the hole in my heart that's shaped like my ex-wife that will never heal and will always hurt, but will hurt less over time. Now, of course, I've got that other hole of the shape of my mother, which will never heal and will hurt less over time. I'm not looking forward to when my father goes, so that's, that's, yay. <laughs> I mean, everybody has to deal with it. And at 55, I'm lucky my parents are alive, were alive at all. I mean, my, my father's in his late 80s. My mother was 19 years older than me, 74. I'm hoping to make it to 74. That'd be a good thing. <clears throat> well, I'm going to go through and thank 20 to 25 people. I've opened up the comments in my community tab. I've gotten lots and lots of comments with lots of support. Thank you all so much. I wish I could thank each and every one of you. But there's just so many I can't. That's why I'm just thanking a small portion of you, but I am thanking you all so much for having left comments. It is greatly appreciated. Now, if I mispronounce your name, no disrespect is intended. I'm an American English speaker. We're not good at usernames. Well, we're not good at any names, but I'm better than most. 
And I'm not reading the comments right now. I'm going to read them afterwards. So whether it's a good comment, bad comment, or a different comment, the fact is you left me a comment. Thank you so very much. It is appreciated. And I count in American Sign Language on the fingers of my left hand. And I still lose track of where I am. So we'll give it a shot with uh, Torment. Thank you very, very much. And Wills, greatly appreciated. Jamin, I think very, I think that's how it's pronounced. Thank you very much. Matu, greatly appreciated. Screaming Popcorn, heck of a name. And thank you very, very much. Pierce, P-E-A-R-C-E, -E, thank you. Jung Vyad Duct, and then a whole bunch of T's, so I, I hope we're close. Thank you very much. And James Banks, greatly appreciated. And Devlin Hamilton, thank you very much. Jimmy B, greatly appreciated. Don Palanqueto, I sure hope I'm close. Joe Norks S, <laughs> thank you. Metherfecker Guy, how about that? And Samuel Pina, greatly appreciated. Ice Damon, Thank you very, very much. Noah Vandermark, thumbs up and thank you. Cliff Burton, greatly appreciated. Natasha Mew, thank you so very, very much. Diana D, greatly appreciated. Indecisive Chisel, heck of a name, and thank you very, very much. Lol Cakes, thank you very much. And Daniel Calzada, greatly appreciated. John Wismiller, I sure hope I've remembered where I am, and thank you very, very much. And then last but not least, it's just a prank. Thank you all so very, very much. It is greatly appreciated. Getting out of my head and into the world is a good thing. I went through that so quickly. It's, I, did I count actually that many? Huh. Well, I zoom through that. Normally it's like 18 minutes when I start, but now I haven't even up to 17. Well though, Thank you so much for coming on this journey of exploration with me. I am so sorry. I am so depressed at this time. I'm going to get better. I am getting better. I, I will get better. I promise. It's just a heck of a blow. And Thumbs up. <laughs> I got Twitter. No, gosh darn it. I'm jumping ahead of myself. If you could check out my various links. I have Twitter, Facebook, Patreon.com, Google Plus, uh, GoFundMe. <clears throat> I said them out of order and I've gotten lost. I'm very sorry. Patreon. Twitter, Facebook, GoFundMe, Patreon.com, Google Plus. There we are. If you could donate to my GoFundMe campaign or become a Patreon.com patron, that would be awesome. I am really facing a lot of secure, secure financial hardships at the moment, and any sort of assistance would be awesome. Thank you very, very much. But if you cannot donate or you simply do not donate, I do take all good wishes, deposit them in the bank of my heart where I draw interest, so thank you very much. If you could toss me a like, I do appreciate all the positive validation I get for my existence, a very good thing. And if you could subscribe to the channel, that would be cool, but I would understand if you don't want to. But if you are down with it, I will do my best to keep you entertained from now. Well, for a long time. Promise you that. I don't plan on going anywhere. I'm, I'm still going to be here. Promise you that. So thumbs up. Wow. There's a whole minute and a half left. Normally I'm pushing like 20 minutes and fighting to find time to say it all quickly enough. I have no idea why this has gone so quickly. Aside from the fact that I'm depressed and forgetting everything and not remembering anything I want to say, which sort of ties in with not with forgetting. Not remembering is a part of forgetting, isn't it? Thumbs up. <clears throat> As a minor aside, if you like the game, zombie game, Dying Light, they've added a whole bunch of new stuff to it. New game mode, new maps, new stuff. They're not giving up on that game. I guess games as a service being pulled out for that old thing, which it's an awesome game, so thumbs up on that. Well, you take care. Have a great day today. I am going to, well, I'm not going to have a reaction today. I'm still not in any sort of frame of mind for that. I'm going to have a game video and hopefully a game video for my game channel because as stated from before, staying busy makes it so I don't just sit and brood over the death of, of everybody these days. I'm at a bad point of life where everyone my age is starting to die, so thumbs up. But you take care. 
Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side. I just realized I forgot to put this on. I'm sorry. Take care. Have a great day.